Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us. I want to kick off by asking you about the comments that we've heard over the last 24 hours from President Trump. He said maybe the crown prince knew and maybe he didn't about the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And either way, Saudi Arabia has his support. How do you feel about getting that kind of praise and support from the president? Well, it's, uh, we have made it very clear that Saudi Arabia as a government is not involved in this. Well, Highness, the Crown Prince is not involved in this at all. We have made it very clear that this was an operation that was uh, that went wrong, where people exceeded their authorities, did something they're not supposed to do. We have made it very clear that we're investigating, that uh, those who committed this crime will be brought to justice, and that uh, procedures will be reviewed in order to make sure it doesn't happen again. And this is exactly what we're doing. Your Excellency, this is a top-down society. Explain to us how the Crown Prince could not know about something like this, because people close to him did. You have, and people, and people were dismissed. They should have known or should have revealed what they knew or should have prevented this or should have made sure that the author authorizations were very clear and the authorities were very clear. The, uh, this was an unfortunate uh, accident and it was a crime and those who committed it will be brought to justice. Our investigation is ongoing. We have asked Turkey to provide us with evidence. We're still waiting for some of the evidence. We're asking other countries if they have any evidence to, pro to provide it to our court system so they can uh, help them with the uh, trials that are taking place. And in terms of Turkey, the foreign minister has just made comments over the last couple of hours in which he said that the level of cooperation from Saudi Arabia hasn't been quite what it should be. How do you respond to that? Quite the contrary. We sent a team to investigate in Turkey. Our friends in Turkey provided evidence, but the evidence unfortunately came to us after it was published and leaked to the newspapers two or three days before. They have given us access to the transcript of the recordings in the consulate. We have asked for the tape itself so that our investigators can do forensics on it and can establish for certainty who the voices belong to and how many people were in the room when the crime was committed. We are still waiting to obtain that. A lot of we people have so. heard that audio. Why do they say that they won't give it to you? I don't know. You should ask them. Um, the other issue that we have is uh, we've said to the, our Turkish friends, if you have any more evidence, please provide it. And so if there's been any delay in providing evidence, it's the other way around. We have sent an investigative team to Turkey who had spent several weeks there in order to work with, the, with our Turkish friends. And our public prosecutor sent three official documents requesting information from Turkey, specific information. We still are waiting for the answers. And in terms of the incident itself, this happened at a Saudi consulate. Do you feel a sense of personal responsibility for what happened, given that this is your remit? Every Saudi is shocked and outraged by this crime, as is every human being. This was not authorized. This was abuse of authority. And this was exceeding responsibilities. And every Saudi wants to see justice served. And our government is determined to continue with the investigation. The public prosecutor has filed charges against 11 individuals. Five of them he's asking for the death penalty. And we are reviewing procedures in order to make sure that something like this can never happen again. And in terms of what we're seeing happen in Washington right now, uh, calls on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, saying that the president isn't doing enough to investigate what happened to Mr. Khashoggi and to hold Saudi Arabia accountable. What's happening there? Do you feel victimized by the political process in Washington? I don't want to say victimized, but I think it's very strange that people render opinions without having access to the evidence, and these opinions were rendered from day one. Saudi Arabia was declared guilty without people seeing evidence, without people knowing the facts, and this has continued since. We are seeing leaks in the media out of Turkey and out of Qatari-owned news entities that are disparaging of the kingdom. And we see a lot of accusations hurled at the kingdom of Saudi Arabia that are not true. We see people leaking stories about CIA reports that condemn Saudi Arabia and then uh, attribute it to anonymous sources. Then we have the official spokesperson of the State Department saying the reports of the CIA report are inaccurate. And we have the President of the United States saying the reports of the CIA report are not accurate. Have so the on the report? fact no. On the base, when people speak on the record, they're more, much more careful and much more balanced in what they say versus people who speak anonymously on background. You don't want to say that you've 
feeling victimized by what's happening in Washington. But do you feel that this situation has really added fodder to a political discourse where the Trump administration is under constant fire? Absolutely. It's very clear. It's very clear. I mean, no doubt people outraged in Saudi Arabia about this, people outraged around the world about this, including in Washington, um, and people express their outrages in different ways. But our point from day one was wait until the investigation is complete. Wait until you see the legal steps that are taken against those who committed this crime and the procedure of putting a place to prevent it from happening again. Then judge us. If you think our trials and our investigation is a Mickey Mouse one, criticize us. But wait until it's done. And in the meantime, if any country has any evidence it would like to provide, we, our prosecutor and our courts would be happy to see it. And in terms of that process, the courts and the trial of those five individuals that are now facing the death penalty, will those court proceedings be transparent? Will they be open to the press? I don't know. This is this, this goes back to the judges and goes back to the courts. And not Do you think a, they should be? I'm not an expert on the legal system, legal procedures, and I, I don't want to comment about something that is not my purview. Now, in terms of what we've been seeing happen over the last several months in particular, obviously the Crown Prince has been charged by King Salman uh, to create jobs in Saudi Arabia. The cornerstone of his economic agenda, Vision 2030, of course, has been the Aramco IPO. That, of course, has been kicked a bit down the road. It's expected uh, not as quickly as, as one would have hoped. The question, of course, going forward is in terms of valuation. Um, the valuation of Aramco does have a lot to do with the factors that we've been seeing over the last several months, what's been happening with the oil price, the fact that folks are going to charge uh, Saudi more uh, when it comes to borrowing costs, um, and certainly political stability as well. What's your message to investors who've watched what's happened over the last couple of months uh, with Saudi Arabia and are now worried about the investment case for this country? The message would be that Saudi Arabia is uh, dealing with this issue, um, uh, this crime, very seriously, and that Saudi Arabia at the same time is committed to pursuing its domestic politics, uh, policies and its foreign policies. Saudi Arabia is committed to diversifying its economy away from oil, to opening up other areas for investment, recreation, entertainment, tourism, um, robotics, artificial intelligence, mining, all of these areas. Saudi Arabia is committed to empowering its youth, empowering women, uh, having a, an efficient and transparent and accountable government. Saudi Arabia is committed to uh, being a friendly destination, a welcoming destination for foreign investment, and Saudi Arabia is also committed to expanding its investments abroad and building on the partnerships it already has around the world. Saudi Arabia is also committed to the strategic partnerships it has with a number of countries, in particular the United States. Saudi Arabia will continue its foreign policy of uh, trying to bring stability and peace to the region and trying to push back against extremism and terrorism and against Iran's nefarious and malign and aggressive policies. I believe that foreign investors will, will recognize that uh, we are committed to continuing the path of reform and the path of openness. There are tremendous opportunities available in Saudi Arabia that uh, foreign investors uh, will want to take advantage of. And so I don't see uh, much of a change. And we saw at the uh, uh, Future Investment uh, uh, in initiative conference in Riyadh, the tens of billions of dollars of agreements that were signed uh, for investment in Saudi Arabia or for investments by Saudi companies. Um, Your Excellency, when we talk about um, what happens next in Yemen, can you give us a timeline for when we could see a political solution? The political solution was available from day one, but the Houthis refused to take it. Do you see a partner that you can work with? It is really, this is a Yemeni-Yemeni issue between the legitimate government of Yemen and the Houthi radical militia allied with Iran and Hezbollah that took over a country and terrorizes the pe people and terrorizes the neighborhood by launching ballistic missiles uh, randomly at cities and towns, including over 200 at Saudi Arabia, that starves people as a policy, that lays siege on towns and villages, that recruits 9 and 10 and 11 year old boys and sends them into battle, that lays mines randomly around Yemen, that costs people life and limb, that uh, hijacks humanitarian assistance and sells it to feed its war machine. This is what they're dealing with. We are very supportive of the UN envoy 
Martin Griffith. We um, are supportive of his attempts to build confidence building measures in order to move Yemen towards a situation of peace. We have provided more than $13 billion in assistance to Yemen, more than any other country in the world. We're committed to continuing to do so. We want the political process to succeed. We want the war to end on the basis of UN Resolution 2216, the GCC initiative and the outcomes of the Yemeni National Dialogue. Every time an agreement was made, Beginning with the agreement made in Kuwait several years ago, the Houthis renege and walk away. We hope that they will show up to the talks in Stockholm and are able to negotiate a roadmap for extracting Yemen from the terrible tragedy that it's living in, and we're very supportive of this. And, sir, I have to ask you finally about, um, frankly, the fact that there have been multiple reports in the press again and again that at the top level, people are unhappy with Saudi Arabia's leadership and that there may be attempts at some point um, to remove the crown prince from the line of succession. What is your message to those who would suggest that regime change in Saudi Arabia is the best way forward? You say that's ridiculous. That's way out of line. The leadership of Saudi Arabia represented in the king and the crown prince is a red line for every Saudi man or woman. The country is totally supportive of them. Uh, every Saudi feels represented by his leadership, and every Saudi represents his or her leadership. This is, these are outrageous comments that are being made are totally unacceptable. Uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is unified on this issue. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is committed to its leadership. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, is committed to the vision that our leaders have put forth for us in terms of Vision 2030 and in terms of moving along the path of reform. And we will continue to move in spite of what people may or may not say. And finally, sir, what's the best price in terms of oil for the future? The uh, one big smile. <laughs> um, because it's not uh, for me to speculate on pricing. Well, Pre President Trump keeps thanking you for it. We have, a, uh, we have an energy minister who's uh, dealing with these issues, and, uh, and I don't want to say anything that would send a certain messages to the market. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.